so let's discuss the questions which came from dermatology in this cbt the first question is we have a 45 year old male obese male who presented with the following lesions here you can see that the image is given of the uh, groin and they are also saying that the same thing is also present on the neck please remember this is a very classical example of acanthosis nigricans what is acanthosis nigricans patient develop hyperpigmented velvety thickening hyperpigmented velvety thickening which is present on the flexures which could be neck which could be uh, groin intermammary area underarms etc there are two types of acanthosis nigricans one is known as benign variety which is seen in young patients associated with metabolic syndrome like obesity like pcod hyperlipidemia so here in this question they are clearly mentioning that he was a obese person another is known as malignant maligna and this is associated with it is seen in elderly individual and it is associated with gastric adeno carcinoma so there are two types of acanthosis nigricans uh, one is known as the benign variety which is seen in obese or metabolic syndrome patient another is a malignant variety which is seen in a patient with gastric adenocarcinoma and they are usually elderly patients next question which of the following what is the answer of this question we have a 30 year old female who presented with itchy lesions uh, in both her axilla uh, since one month what is the most likely diagnosis now this is a very classical example of apocrine malaria now for understanding this you should remember that this is our skin with a hair follicle epidermis dermis hypodermis and this is the hair okay so there are three glands which are associated uh, or there are three glands which are present in our skin what are these three glands first is you have eccrine gland which is opening directly onto the surface of skin this is your eccrine gland then there is sebaceous gland sebaceous gland opens into the hair follicle this is your this is your apocrine gland so you have eccrine gland you have apocrine gland you can see that apocrine gland is opening into the hair follicle while eccrine gland opens directly onto the surface of skin now sometimes you see obstructions eccrine gland if it obstruct at the level of stratum corneum you call it malaria crystallina if it obstruct at the level of stratum malpighian what is malpighian it is a combination of stratum basal and stratum spinosum this is your malaria rubra and stratum if the obstruction is at dermo epidermal junction it is malaria profunda so these are the obstruction with respect to the eccrine sweat gland what is the name given to the obstruction which occurs in the apocrine gland it is known as apocrine malaria or fox for dice disease apocrine malaria or fox for dice disease that is the obstruction which occurs to the apocrine gland duct now what is the clinical feature of fox for dice disease they usually occur in uh, females uh, especially they will have a itchy papular lesions on the axilla it can be on the groin it can be on the intermammary area so that is how a patient of uh, apocrine malaria or fox for dice disease presents so the answer is option number 4 now next question is we have a 5 day uh, after 5 days of an unprotected homosexual intercourse 27 year old male so first thing is unprotected intercourse then the second is burning micturition third is on gram stain you see gram negative diplococci so what are you seeing on gram stain you see gram negative diplococci this is a very classical example of gonococcal urethritis now how that is the answer let me explain you that whenever you get a patient of urethral discharge 
so whenever you have a patient of urethral discharge there can be two dts first one is what can be the first differential diagnosis gonococcal urethritis first one is gonococcal urethritis second one is non gonococcal the example under gonococcal urethritis is neisseria gonorrhea and under non gonococcal it is chlamydia trachomatis which is the most common one trichomonas vaginalis urea plasma mycoplasma clinical feature is the incubation period is more than sorry it is less than 1 week for gonococcal and it is more than 2 week for non gonococcal patient will have profuse discharge per urethra and when you do a gram stain you will see gram negative diplococci which is given in our question but in the patients of non gonococcal urethritis what is the feature you get scanty discharge and on doing a gram stain what do you get on doing a gram stain you see only pus cells no organism so please remember if you see a organism normally it is very difficult for us to demonstrate the non gonococcal organisms like chlamydia uh, into a uh, in a routine gram stain so you do not see any organism in a gram stain when you are looking a patient of non gonococcal but in a patient of gonococcal urethritis you do see gram negative diplococci so in our index uh, question in this question you can see that you know there is uh, multiple gram negative diplococci and that is why the answer becomes option number 4 clear I think it's a very simple example which of the following is the best uh, treatment what is the diagnosis here you can see that there is a grouped vesicles on the angle of the mouth this grouped vesicle is very classical of herpes labialis this is an example of herpes labialis a very classical example of herpes labialis please remember in herpes labialis the causative agent is herpes simplex type 1 or 2 type 1 is more common if it is uh, herpes labialis while in herpes genitalis type 2 herpes simplex virus is more common what is the treatment you have to give acyclovir 400 mg 3 times a day for 5 to 7 days so the answer to this question becomes option number 4 so uh, please remember herpes zoster is different so students they always get confused herpes zoster is something which occurs with uh, on a single dermatome this is a question of herpes simplex in herpes simplex we see the lesions uh, which is present localized to a mucocutaneous junction in herpes zoster the lesion is present on a dermatome okay coming to the next question the last question uh, in this paper was we have a two month old infant with a history of otitis media this is something very important here sometimes in children you have infection uh, due to staphylococcus it can be sore throat it can be otitis media now from the infective focus staphylococcus releases toxin into the blood and this toxin goes and bind to desmoglein 1 when they bind to desmoglein 1 they causes the damage to desmoglein 1 and this will give rise to extensive splitting or blistering of the skin this is known as staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome so what is the main problem here staphylococcus aureus released a exfoliative toxin and this toxin bind to desmoglein 1 this toxin binds to desmoglein 1 and what happens when they bind to desmoglein 1 it causes skin exfoliation okay now why the oral mucosa is not involved because you all know that in the oral mucosa we do not have any desmoglein 1 and that is why mucosal sparing occur option number 2 and 3 also presents with extensive exfoliation 
but in both of them in steven johnson in toxic epidermal necrolysis you will see involvement of mucosa but here there is no mucosal involvement and that is why the answer is option number 4 so with this we are done with the five questions which we got from this particular topic